Republican Nikki Haley is seemingly always about to run for president. And she has had this really weird position in the party where, look, if Trump had never existed, she would pattern herself or she'd be proud to say that she is an old school Republican, more like a modern Reagan. But she has had to exist under Donald Trump, initially being critical of him back during 2016, then working with him while he was president, then criticizing him after the insurrection. But if she decides to run, She's either gonna have to beat Trump, which she seems unlikely to wanna do, or get his approval so that she can beat other candidates. So it's a very interesting position. So her messaging, I think is interesting to get in her her head and see what she actually thinks about Trump's role in the party, what the messaging should be for Republican candidates. So let's roll a little bit of her describing her worldview. The barbarians of the world fear nothing more than a confident and strong United States with the courage of our convictions. The most important mission of our time is to stop our national self-loathing and to regain our courage and renew our convictions. Have things gotten so badly wrong in our society that we are unable to resist the forces of evil? For many Americans, the answer would be yes. A large portion of our people are plagued by self-doubt or even by hatred of America. It's a pandemic much more damaging than any virus. Every day more people think living in the land of the free is a curse, not a blessing. You hear it on the news, you read it on social media and in school curricula. You see it in rage and riots on our streets. That's fun. The partisanship that we're experiencing is a pandemic worse than COVID-19. I mean, I can't speak for everyone, but COVID took a member of my family and tribalism hasn't yet. But she thinks it was a good line anyway, Adrian. What do you think about this plight of people doubting themselves and hating their country? Oh, well, you know, Nikki Haley, much like Reagan, is a decent actor. Like, get out of here with that line. You know, trying to distract from the fact that COVID is significant and it is potentially fatal and fatal in many circumstances, that that is a huge significant threat that we're facing and trying to minimize it and to suggest that, oh, people, you know, it's, it's their criticism of the United States. That's the real problem. Yeah, right. We love the country and thus we criticize it. Also, it's, it just reminds us that Jan January 6th is just as problematic as the people up there on their pulpits, essentially, um, you know, just advancing these lies and propaganda to try to sway us. Yeah. Yeah. And look, everybody criticizes stuff about America that is true of literally every person. We might say, well, our healthcare system absolutely sucks. We should have Medicare for all. They might put a hat on that says America is not great. It needs to be made great again. Clearly, you didn't think everything was hunky dory. But she goes on to say that anger towards America has become the bedrock belief of the American left. I guess I didn't know that, I should put that in my bio now. Adding that Democrats don't even believe in America and have given up on America as a colorblind society. That took a very particular turn there at the end, Adrian, that, that like this is what we should be working towards. She apparently says that that message was our message first as Republicans and we must take it once again to the American people. I don't know if this is like trying to get into the whole uh, the backlash against CRT thing. Is, is that what she's trying to appeal to? I'm honestly not sure. Yeah, it's trying to create that whole narrative that people who are criticizing the United States or who speak up against the systems of oppression that for some reason they don't love America enough and that the real way to go about it is to put on blinders and to pretend that the oppressions that people are calling out that they don't really exist. It's just pushing more of that us them narrative and trying to maintain the status quo. Yeah. Well, look, um, she also gave some quotes that we unfortunately don't have time uh, to uh, to cover, implying that she might well run for president, which I mean, when they say they're not gonna run for president, there's like a 75% chance they're gonna run for president. If they're saying they're going to, then they're definitely going to if they think they have any chance. So um, this is just an early preview for what she's gonna be about. Based on the speech that I just listened to, they're, they're not gonna elect her. Like there's gonna be someone who's gonna give a purer, more frothing at the mouth version of that speech. This is the party of Marjorie Greene and Matt Gates. I don't think they're electing her, but 
I don't know, maybe I'm wrong, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe they're gonna take a hard turn back to the 80s. Thanks for watching The Young Turks, really appreciate it. Another way to show support is through YouTube memberships. You'll get to interact with us more. There's live chat emojis, badges. You've got emojis of me, Anna, John, JR. So those are super fun. But you also get playback of our exclusive member only shows and specials right after they air. So all that, all you gotta do is click that join button right underneath the video. Thank you.